In this exercise, we'll learn how to add text or annotation to a view. Let's zoom in here on this wall section view. And what I'd like to do is begin by adding a piece of text over here that's going to indicate that this room is part of the garage area. Come underneath the Annotate tab and then select on the big A, which is going to be A Text. It's the text command. On the ribbon, you're going to see four different A's. This one will not have a leader associated with it. So that's going to be the type that we're going to pick in this instance. I will point out that this is text one quarter of an inch aerial. So this is going to be a fairly big note when we click in here and type it in. Somewhere in this general area where you can see my cursor moving around, click once and we can start typing inside of the text box. Type in garage and then click somewhere out in space when you're done typing. When you do that, you can now see that the word garage is there and it's defining the fact that this area is our garage area. If we need to move this around, you can select back on the piece of text and there's these little arrows here that stand for drag. And if you click and hold your mouse button down on those arrows, you can then move that title around any place you feel like on the screen. We're not gonna do this in this particular case, but I'll also point out it looks like sort of a circular arrow. By clicking on that and holding the mouse button down, we would be able to rotate this text around whatever angle we needed it to be at. Now, perhaps the way that this is written isn't quite the way that we'd want it. Maybe instead we need to modify this text after the fact. Select back on that piece of text and then click on it really quick twice. If you do that, you'll then be able to modify it right from this screen. Perhaps I want this to read two car garage instead. I just use my arrow keys to come back to the front, though I could have clicked right in front of the G. I'm going to type two car. And one thing that you'll notice is that this starts to go down one row at a time when you do this. Go ahead and click out here in space. The reason why I did that is that it did create a text box when we first clicked and started typing in the word garage. Well, the box grew to whatever the length of the word garage was, and then it stopped. When we clicked back inside of the text box again, the text box knew how big it should be at that point, so it kept itself at that size, and it just started doing these words one after another down like this because they could no longer fit into the box. If we want to make this box be a little bit bigger, we can. Just click on the text, move your mouse over here to this individual dot, which is technically called a grip. Hold your mouse button down on the dot, and you can pull it out as far as you want, or pull it in as far as you want, in order to create the kind of text condition that you want to achieve. In this case, I'm going to leave it right about there and just have it say two car garage, and then click out here in the space. If we'd wanted to predefine the size of that text box, we could have done that as well. Now, I'm not going to actually type anything here. I just want to show you the process of predefining the text box. And that would have been by coming underneath the text command, clicking and holding your mouse button down, and then dragging the size you'd like the text box to be, then letting go. And you can see how long this would be automatically. And if I'd start to type, once I got to the end, it'd wrap the next word down to the next line, come to the end, wrap the next word down to the following line. Now, since I don't want to type anything in this box, I'm just going to click out here in the space. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is start to label what some of these inner materials are on our wall section. I'm going to pick this next one, which is called two segments. This one, which is curved, and this one, which is one segment, all do basically the exact same thing. The only difference is, is how the arrow looks. This one is going to have an arrow that looks just like this arrow looks on the preview that's going to pop out here in just a second. It's going to go up, and then it's going to curve over. It's going to be a nice hard angle. The curved, very similar, except it has a curved arrow at the end. And then the top one, which is one segment, doesn't have that extra extension at the end. It's just a straight line and then stops right there at the end. Let's start by doing the two segment. Click here in this general area, move up, click right about here, come over, and you'll notice that when you come over to where the text is at down below, you'll get a blue dashed line that shows up. This blue dashed line will show up any time that you move your text over to an area that's lined up with another piece of text. This allows you to quickly be able to line your text up without needing to draw in extra lines to know that these are in fact in a nice clean line. Once you get to this dashed line, just click and you can start to type in. In this case, it's gonna be two by six studs at 16 inches on center. The at symbol, 
16 inches OC for on center. If at this point you click enter, it'll take you down to the next line. And if there was more that you needed to add, you could continue the type. In this case though, I don't need to. So just click somewhere out here in the space to finish off the command. I'm gonna hit escape a couple times on the keyboard. Once again, I'm gonna come back up to the text command. And in this case, I'm gonna show you the curved arrow. So pick on curved, click in roughly the same kind of area. You'll see that blue dashed line that tells you that yes, indeed, your text is lined up. You can click there. Once you get to this spot, the next thing that you should type in is going to be R-19 bat insulation, and then click in order to end the command. And you can see that all this text is lined up. Now, the next thing I'd like to show is the fact that even after the text has been placed, we've already proven that the text can be changed by clicking on it and then clicking in the box again and then typing in something new. But in this case, these are both quarter inch tall, which is really too big. So underneath properties, under the type selector list, we're gonna change these to be 3 30 seconds aerial. We can see that the notes are much smaller now. The truth is, is that this is at a quarter inch print size, and this is at 3 30 seconds of an inch. So no matter what the scale of that view is, this will always be at the correct print size. So 3 30 seconds will always print at 3 30 seconds of an inch. If we select back up here where the text is at again, I'll point out that there is the one segment option. I'm going to move back down here again, click in this area right here. We can see that the dashed line is showing up. I'm gonna change this to be 3 30 seconds aerial before I make my next click. So that means when I place this text and I type in airspace, that that's gonna be that 3 30 seconds aerial font. And the last thing to know as far as this text is concerned is if I select back on any of these pieces of text, look over here underneath properties. Right now we've been talking about the 330 seconds as well as a quarter inch aerial under the type selector list. The reason why they have those properties beyond just the properties we've seen up here is if you select on the edit type button, you'll see that this is the font and it's a Windows font. It's always going to need to be a Windows font. This is the size that the font would be, the width that the font would be, and the rest of the properties associated with such things as the arrow. So in order to place text inside of your Revit dialog, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select on okay to that. Remember, it's underneath the annotate tab, and it's the big A with the word text next to it. You select on that, choose whether or not you wanna have an arrow or not, and then click wherever you wanna place either your arrow or your first line of text.